So now on to one of my favorite topics, alcohol. Brian Petro was one of the speakers at the first PK night. I believe I was mistaken earlier when I said 2006 was the first PK in Dayton. It was 2009, six years ago. Brian presented on something completely different. Now he is a bartender, and you can go visit him Thursday through Saturday night at Rue de Maine if you have more questions after this. Um, he's been a bartender for more than 10 years, and tonight he's going to talk to us about one of the darkest periods in cocktailing, the 1970s and 80s. I'm sure some of you remember a very bad Tom Cruise movie with a kind of bad Beach Boys song. That was the kind of sort of peak and the end of that era. I, I bet you're going to hit that point. <laughs> I'm going to leave the rest to Brian. <laughs> so when you think about classic cocktails, you usually think of the ones that happened between the 1860s with Joe, Joe Thomas all the way through the 1960s with Mad Men. You really want to pull up short of the 1970s because the 1970s weren't a great era for the cocktails. They were fake. like a good picture, but the suit's probably polyester, the hair might be polyester, and the watch definitely is not gold. So what happened in the, in the 70s and 80s is they took all these classic cocktails and kind of in these great spirits and kind of covered them up. This is a stinger. Now, it would be great if it was muddled mint and uh, simple syrup, but it's cream de mint, which is a very sweet, syrupy, mixed with brandy, which just is way too sweet for you to drink more than one. Duran Burley in the background makes a lovely rusty nail and probably nothing else. Again, it's a very sweet herbal liqueur, and it's covering up the scotch beautifully underneath there. So they were kind of taking the lessons of the 60s, but they weren't really applying them that well. If you see a bottle of Galliano in a bar, it has been there since the if it's a new bar, they borrowed it from an old bar. <laughs> Galliano is a very sweet, vanilla forward liqueur, and it really made up only a couple of cocktails, one of them being the Harvey Wallman. <laughs> Load the glass ashtray and swimmer keys off to the side. A Harvey Wallbanger is really an alcoholic orange julius. It's vanilla with Galliano, orange juice, and vodka. So again, cloyingly sweet, but taking a screwdriver and just making a mess of it. Galliano got to star in its own cocktail called the Golden Cadillac, also the name of a failed 70s bar in New York. The Golden Cadillac is the Galliano with a shot of cream de cocoa and cream. Again, a great dessert drink, not anything you're going to drink over the course of the day. Don't laugh at the grasshopper. Milk. And cream were apparently very big in the 1970s, and the grasshopper is a thin mint that's going to get you a little buzz. Again, it's probably going to make you full before it gets you drunk because all it is is cream to mint, cream to cocoa. What does this cocktail look like to you? Mud slide is a great answer, but this is really a brandy Alexander. Right here, that guy. It is brandy covered up with either cream de cocoa, with cream de cocoa, milk, hopefully ice cream. But again, very desserty, very sweet. I use the pina colada as a bridge between the 70s and the 80s because Escape, the pina colada song, yes. was the last hit of the 1970s. And this is also a very creamy drink, most likely made with pina colada mix, not coconut milk and pineapple. The Rubik's Cube is a very 80s toy for very 80s drinks. It's bright, it's colorful. We're not going to make an effort to finish the whole thing, but we'll get one, maybe two sides done. <laughs> now, these bright colors come from bartenders being continuously lazy, and instead of muddling fresh strawberries or making a peach, uh, peach puree, they use these. There's even amaretto. Yeah, we're going to use amaretto. Classic cocktail. 
Cheerios. This is a blue margarita, or an electric margarita, or a blue Cadillac margarita. Really, it's the same margarita, just with blue liqueur in it instead of the traditional orange Kurosawa triple set. This is a Long Island iced tea. I'm sure all of you are familiar. You may be familiar with the variant of a Strong Island iced tea if you go to the right bar. But this is another just lazy, we can put in as much of the liquors that we want, cover it up with sour mix out of the bottle and some Coke, and people are going to be happy. This is something that's a little rare now, but it was very big in the 80s. Slow gin. Slow gin is gin, so it sounds cool, but it's got some sweet berries in it, so it's actually really sweet. You can make an Alabama Slammer with it, you can make a slow gin fizz with it, you can also make a slow, comfortable screw. The 80s are where it's at if you want a sexy drink. You can have sex on the beach. You can have a slippery nipple, a slippery dick. You can have a blowjob as long as you want to finish out the entire evening with a screaming orgasm. <laughs> now, the next slide is kind of where the bottom point is, and Dante referred to this earlier. <laughs> cocktail. Now, there are people in the audience that I know disagree with me, but <laughs> cocktail is not a good movie for bartending. Selfishness, that we don't care about the customers, we only care about making crappy cocktails and flair bartending, which is horrible. In New York, at the same time, this gentleman right here, his name is Dale DeGroff, also known as King Cocktail. If you're a bartender, you know him. He took the rainbow room and started bringing in something here called fresh ingredients, old bitters, classic cocktails. And he turned the cocktail world back from all the crap in the 70s and 80s to really nice cocktails like this Cosmopolitan, which was featured in what from what I hear is a very popular TV show. <laughs> he brought back fresh lemonade, he made great cocktails again, and that just took over the entire city once they saw how easy it is and how much better the cocktails were. Thank you very much. I have classes that happen, feel free to come talk to me during the beer week, beer break to find out more about it since I'm the only thing standing between you and beer right now. Thank you very much for listening and have a great evening.